Reading the Bible literally is like trying to interpret a dream literally. You would end up missing what was really meant to be revealed by the symbolisms used. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many is referring to those who will try and convince others that I'm not Jesus. One of the contradictions Muslims like to point out is that more than one person in the Bible is referred to as God's firstborn. My answer to them is that we are all his firstborn if we are a child of God. Firstborn is referring to a status rather than some sort of chronological order of when a person actually became a son of God. The Quran says that it confirms the revelation that came before it. But then it claims that God has no children and that Jesus wasn't crucified. That is not a confirmation. That is a contradiction. Those that say we shouldn't pray to saints and angels are usually the same ones that say we should pray to Jesus. However, a thorough reading of Scripture will show no examples of people praying to Jesus either. The only thing you'll find is praying in the name of Jesus, not to Jesus. All prayers were made directly to God the Father. Are we supposed to take that as meaning that prayers to Jesus are improper also? No, we're not supposed to take that as improper also. Since tradition has taught us that prayers made to Jesus and the saints and angels are acceptable. The Bible says to behold your mother. It doesn't say to disrespect. We are going to do things our way. Islam has been both a blessing and a curse. A curse in that it has set us back a thousand years or so in establishing God's kingdom. A blessing in that it gives me the perfect opportunity to prove who I am when I succeed in converting all the Muslims. This is not a mother and son cult. If anything, it's a mother, son, and father call, of which I'm unaware of any sort of prohibition against. When my family told me that they didn't want me around, because you never know what a crazy person will do, I felt like Job when he lost his whole family. However, God has assured 
people like me, who have given up everything for his name's sake, that I will inherit eternal life. This is not of my own doing. It started with me having a revelation that I might be Jesus. And then asking myself, what would Jesus do, which I then started doing? I am supposed to be perfect just as my Father in Heaven is perfect. However, the more screwed up I am, the more apparent it is that what is being done is not of my own doing. It allows you to see the Father's hand in this more clearly. I'm not a genius. I'm Jesus. If you were to ask a person holding a jar with wine in it what they have, the person could respond by saying that it's a jar. Or they could respond by saying that it's a jar of wine. Or they could respond by saying that it's wine. All three of these responses would technically be the correct answer to the question asked. However, only the third one is really on point with what would you sought to know. It is the same way when I tell people who I am. I could say I'm a person, or I could say I'm a person with Jesus' spirit in me. Or I could simply say I'm Jesus, especially when I'm answering for the Spirit of Christ in me. The right thing for me to do in a situation where I have ten pairs of shoes and you have none or only an old pair of raggedy shoes which routinely occurs in a world of have and have-nots, is to give you a pair. In fact, it would be immoral not to. Why then is it acceptable to you as a believer in God to base your whole society on this? immoral behavior of not doing so capitalism instead of on something much more righteous where common sharing of everything is required communism What seems better to you? A society where you have to share or a society where you don't have to 